Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. And today, we have a special guest, Mohammed Kareem, who is one of the stars of the brand new, newly released, A Day to Die. Mohammed, thank you for being our guest. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really excited for this interview. How you doing? I'm doing great. And like I told you before we got started, I watched the movie, again, you know, yesterday again. Uh, definitely a high adrenaline action packed film uh <laughs> you play lieutenant reynolds uh in the film now the film uh is available out now on video on demand on your video on demand platform of choice for everybody that's watching it's called a day to die it stars bruce willis kevin dillon frank grillo muhammad kareem here who plays lieutenant reynolds so when you booked this role, uh, tell us the thoughts that went through your head. You know, the, the movie you were going to do, the people you were going to be working with. What were your emotions and feelings at the moment you found out that you booked it? It was a lot of emotions, to be honest with you, John, like different things. Like it's kind of like checked a lot of boxes for me being an artist here in Hollywood. Um I think the big win for me here in, in, in when I start reading the whole script is was the fact that, I, um, you know, start with Lieutenant Reynolds become like detective and getting high ranked and everything. The fact that number one, it's a non stereotype role, which is odd here in Hollywood yeah. playing. Finally, you get to play, you know, a cool, normal role. It doesn't matter where you're originally from or like your culture or your look or your skin or whatever. So the fact that I get to play uh, one of the leads and uh, he's he's a uh, detective and he's he's on top of that, he's the, the good guy, like yes. the good guy in a film. That's you don't get that much here in Hollywood, much of uh, these type of, uh, of roles here. Uh, so that kind of like check several, you know, boxes for me, sort of like. In terms of uh, uh, the role, the, um, the 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 scenes that gathered me with with Bruce Willis, like the fact that I all my scenes it's opposite uh, uh, Bruce, yeah. that kind of like really kind of like you know got really my interest too. I bet, I bet. Now the film opens up with a very intense action sequence. Um, yeah. We know that night had uh, a lasting effect on the characters throughout the film. Uh, how do you think it impacted your character, Reynolds, who, you know, you mentioned it. He's the good guy and probably, I would say, the only good guy that we really get to know in the film. Your character, I mean, really is the only good guy. I mean, let's start off with that. What are your thoughts on that, on being the only person that has a moral compass in this movie i really liked it because uh we usually usually uh, watch these uh actions uh, it's sort of like films like it's a straight up action there's no much drama in there uh sort of like the same characters that you always like a bad guy or whatever like you know highest or like uh uh you know sort of like a bank robbery or whatever but in this particular film and especially my role as he said um, being the only nice guy in the film. I think that's a lot of privilege for me. And the fact that I'm given like a strong message in there that, you know, Reynolds had that sort of character that he wants to implement law. He, he, he wants the law and order. He wants to do everything right. And he doesn't care uh, what's going to happen for him as long as he's doing the right thing. And he, he, he always after his beliefs and he wants to do, you know, uh, bring justice. Done. And that kind of put him in a lot, a lot of trouble, not just like with the bad guys. No, it's all also internally with his, you know, superior or his bosses, or whatever. The fact that he, uh, you know, he throughout the movie, we see that he got that kind of like he's got feelings telling him that there's something's off and there's something wrong and he needs to change. And he, he talks with, you know, his, his boss or whatever, and people don't really listen to him and they're not believing what he's saying. Uh, but he kept, you know, digging and he, he wanted to prove his point that he's right. Yeah. And the fact that he confronts his boss and 
that sort of uh, intense uh, scenes and, um, you know, uh, when he kind of like ha had that master, master scene with Elsa and Bruce Willis and he's saying like, it, something's off. Like, why every time I have somebody under my custody, he either like uh, gets killed or kidnapped or something wrong. So he kind of like uh, had that, but nobody ever wanted to listen to him. And they didn't believe him until he proved his point, and he had to prove at the end that he bring down the the, the big chief. dog, as they yeah, say. Yeah, the chief. So yeah. surrounded by corruption in the police department, in the military, on the streets, of course. Um, I've spoken to a lot of actors, and for a lot of actors, they like to fill in their own backstory on their character even though the writers don't give it to them or the director doesn't give it to them. So in your mind, as you were building up Reynolds, uh, yeah. how did you uh, portray him in a way that he kept a sense of what was right and wrong uh, while being surrounded by all this corruption? That was one of my first questions when I, when I had my conversation with my director, with Miller, who I, you know, shoot out for him. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, he he's such a great uh, director that I you know I kind of learned a lot from him. He he's that kind of guy that you sit down with him and brainstorm over the character. And my first question to him was, "What's Reynolds' motivation? Why would he want to do this? Why he wants to do always want to do the right thing? It should be something in there that this is his motivation that he's always want to do." You know, bring justice. Uh, he he's after the bad guys. He doesn't he doesn't care what's gonna happen to him. Doesn't care if if this is gonna backlash him or make him you know some problems whatever internally. As long as he's doing the right thing, there must be something in his his life, his history, whatever yeah. that happened that kind of like uh, motivates him and pushes him really hard to do this. And we came out you know with uh, I just made that he's a single dad. And uh, he has like, you know, daughter. And there was a, actually, there was a, a really nice scene at the beginning. Uh, uh, but, you know, with the edit and stuff, it wasn't there. But I think whether it's there or not, you know, you build up your own character, as he said. And I built that with, with Wes, that he's a single dad. He has only one daughter and um, his wife passed away. So I built up like how his wife passed away is because he was after, you know, a criminal who mm. happens to kill his wife. So that kind of like motivate him to be in the police in the first place and to always, you know, sacrifice and go all in for justice. Uh, so that kind of motivate Reynolds in order to always uh, want to implement law and bring justice because his family got really affected because of injustice and because of he couldn't, you know, uh, bring the whoever was there the reason for his wife's death and he wants so you, to bring a better world for his child too for sure for sure like we had a scene at the beginning i remember um you know i'm t I'm, I'm talking to bruce and i'm telling him right after we kind of like you know uh um took care of the situation and we kind of like uh released the hostages and i told him uh you know congrats you finally did it and um, you know, my, my daughter's birthday, I have to be there for her, you know, like, and we had that kind of uh, scene at the beginning, but I think it, it makes sense that was, you know, take it out because at that part of the film at the beginning there, it was so much intense and you don't have that much of yeah. conversation that you can put, but that kind of, that was like my background of the story that you have that, um, uh, history and you have that sort of like motivation that motivates you to do the right thing. Absolutely. So I, I just took it from there and just kept, kept going. Now, when I was watching the movie, uh, because you are like the, the part of the police department that doesn't fit because you're not corrupt, I was actually questioning, are you part of like some internal affairs uh, inside the police department? You know, the police that police the police. Uh, but no, you're not. You're a regular cop. Uh, you're just not corrupted like the majority of the forces and in particular uh your boss were there any aspects of uh, yourself that you put into reynolds 
For sure. You know, we all have a lot of things in, in, in life that we see or watch or something that you kind of like as an actor, you need to bring this and reflect it on the screen as well sometimes. So we, we get either if, if we didn't go through something in life, we always try to bring something that from your experience, from your friends or family, whatever happened to them. Um, but answering you, um, you remember that scene when he was talking to Kevin Dillon and he, he had to take his badge Yeah, and he, he took away his gun as well because yeah. he's believe, the one that I cast- believe uh, he called you an asshole. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Reynolds, it's not just like after the bad guy's outside, he's inside, outside, you know, whatever it takes, as long as he's doing the right thing. And he's always doing his own investigation on everything, making sure that things are going right. Yeah. So that's why he took one of his colleagues badge and, and, and gun because he, he felt that this is not right. And investigation has to be, to be done. And, uh, uh, I think, Reynolds, it's it's everywhere in the world, man. You know, yeah. it's everywhere. It's not just like in the police. It's in the hospital. It's in in the court. In in in, in real life, in markets, everywhere. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely, there are a lot of great people out there, and I think this is great message that saying that you know every even 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 if you have like a lot of like bad guys around, each bad guy has his own sort of bright side that you can. There's no no such thing that like hundred percent evil. Exactly, you, you, and we're gonna have, and we're, we're gonna get to one of the big bad guys here in, in a little bit. But I want to talk about your fellow castmates here. You know, Bruce Willis, Kevin Dillon, Frank Grillo. What was it like working with those guys? I mean, Bruce Willis is a legend. Bruce Willis, I know he's known for action movies, but Bruce Willis is a great actor. He's an amazing actor. Uh, he can do drama. You know, he's done The Sixth Sense. Uh, then, of course, the action movies, the Die Hard movies. Uh, what was it like uh, working with Bruce? Because you and him had a lot of uh, scenes together in this movie. Was this the first time that you got to meet Bruce Willis? Yeah, that was my first time, actually. And, and what was your impression uh, getting to meet him and working with him uh, on set? I think we hit it off for the first time, man. Like, I remember, like, the first... The time we met was on set. That was uh, one of my master scenes, like the the one in the, in, in the coffee shop, and that's where I kind of like my first time I confront him and tell him why every time you you hear uh, Pettis' name, you get like you know sort of like get scared. Yeah. And he's supposed to be my boss, so that was like the first you know confrontation that I that I did. I think before we even started, he was such a nice guy, man. He's so down to earth, really cool. And that kind of like gives me so so much confidence. And I think he's such a great legend, man. Like the fact that, you know, I grew up watching Die Hard movies and a big fan of, of, of all his work. And he just said it, man. He, he Bruce did everything. He did the action, the drama, the thriller, everything. Wow. Uh, you know, this is like the dream of anybody can, can get the same sort of uh, uh, path he had. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had a lot of really good moments, you know, like in between scenes, he kind of chat and, have, you know, we, we have fun. And it was like, where are you from originally? It was like, oh, you're from Egypt. And we got a really nice conversation that, you know, we had there. And um, I learned uh, a lot of things from him, actually, especially during the, the tough uh, action scenes that we had. Yeah. And I he's mean, very, we, obviously, he's very experienced with action movies. Oh, my God. That goes without oh my, saying. Oh, my God. You can see the joy in his eyes doing all these action scenes, like literally, like, grabbing that machine gun and, like, you know, walking down, like, downtown Jackson, Mississippi. They're literally, by the way, they're literally, like, shut up for, for all the production uh, um, of, of the film. They literally blocked down the whole city. Like, wow. Literally the evacuated downtown Mississippi for us. Uh, which I have to, uh, you know, uh, say uh, thanks a lot for all the uh, Mississippi guys that we met over. They were so warm welcoming over there while I was shooting the film. Uh, but literally, we, we had a uh, city that no one else but us. And of wow. course, that, you know, the real cops and the, the, the uh, ambulance and like the fire department and everything was like highly alert. Uh, safety was number one, of mm-hmm. course. Um, I remember me and Bruce like having all these action scenes and shooting and, uh, you know, blowing up cars and like 
car explosions and stuff. And you see, like, having conversation between scenes and having fun. All of a sudden, you see, like, Bruce, like, shifted in, in like, no, like, like, no second, man. Like, yeah. all of a sudden, he, sh- he shifted to Elson and, like, grabbing him just, like, into character. Um, I think he's he, he's a he's a true uh, legend, man. Absolutely. Now, speaking how they shut down the city, has this is this movie the biggest budget film that you have done to date? Uh, in the U.S., yes. Um, I mean, I've I've done a lot of fe- feature films and uh, and and TV and stuff uh, abroad, uh, like in in Egypt. And as they say, it's Egypt is like the Hollywood of the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, so um, we've shot a lot of projects over there. But definitely here, um, as you can see the film, it, it looks really rich and on, on the big screen. Oh yeah. Um, um, I think everybody did a great job. It was pull it off really nicely and 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 great. And I enjoyed working with him actually. Um, and I was really kind of like, um, actually, the first time I watched the film was literally like last week when we had our first uh, premiere in New York, and it was such a great feeling sort of like watching the film with the audience and getting like the instant feedback right away with with everybody there i think that that was amazing and uh i had great time with with the audience we had like a Q&A right after uh was me uh uh, was the director leon vernon um so you know we we had a lot of fun um um you know with the audience there so get to see all these um you know the, the whole film after all put together you go like wow that, 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 that that's that's a great film and honestly i think it's one of the best um uh, bruce willis films in the past few years honestly by far it is and uh you know uh seeing it with the people and the the critics really like this movie the fans are enjoying this movie was there any nerves leading up to the premiere on your end on you know is this movie going to do well is it not going to be received well uh were you pretty confident uh how were you in the days leading up to the release i was actually um i you know believe it or not i kind of traveled like almost like two days traveling uh i was like in egypt and then to dubai and then from dubai to la and then from la to new york non-stop (laughs) I just wanted to make it on time on the screening. So I was like the most excited guy uh, wanted to uh, really eagerly wanted to watch the film. Uh, so I have no doubt that this film, it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, great. And when I saw it, it's like on steroids, like even more than I expected, you know. Um, it I is think different the, seeing the finished product after it's all put together, edited, music is added, and ready 100%. to go. And you're like, man, was that really me there? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Captain Alston, who is Bruce Willis's character and your character, like we said, yeah. you guys have a lot of screen time together. There's a chemistry. Uh, you're, you, he knows you are sort of picking up on his red flags. Did you and Bruce have um, discussions on how you two are going to play off each other? Um, when we were rehearsing, actually, when we we're reading the lines and we we're like, we kind of like go through it like multiple times before we get into the, you know, um, action. And um, I give uh, a lot of credit for Wes as well, because he was, you know, in the middle of all that. Uh, but um, I think there was great synergy with Bruce. I think there was a really good, great chemistry as well uh you can feel it like you know what i mean like you can feel it like you you say your line and then you he surprised you with something you 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 know you 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 answer back so i think that was pretty cool and like all the scenes actually for each scene with bruce was a master scene for me because there was like a something that you know it's 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 a turning point at certain point if you because mm-hmm. at the beginning of the film, there's like a, a year and a half right after the, the first incident, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where he got promoted and he, he, he took me with him. So sort of like there is a promotion in there. Um, so I think, um, it, you know, I, I, I kind of like love the way, you know, every time you get to have like a different sort of scene and it's totally different, like aspect like one of like just like a, you're super calm you're talking about like what's the situation and why this is happening 
and then you're, you you have a little bit doubt and then you talk with your other colleagues and you tell them like there's something's off with the, with yeah. our boss you know and then you start thinking about it and they they tell you like drop it yeah you don't like that's don't your even... boss i mean what are you talking about you know exactly. exactly now and it's so hard if you think about it it's so hard because there are years that me and him working together supposedly right mm -hmm. and so it's it's not just like a uh um he's like my body he's like a, a family sort of relationship so for me to to believe or start having doubts that there's something wrong about the boss is doing something wrong mm -hmm. that you know this is like insane this is deep inside uh reynolds my character it's it's so sad it is it's like so he doesn't want to believe this he does like there he doesn't want to think that it's it's true that you know uh there's something's wrong yeah. He, he, he really wants this not to be the true thing, you yeah. know, but unfortunately, uh, he, you know, it, it feels so bad even at the end. I don't want to be like too much spoiler in there, but, um, uh, you know, at the, at the end, even he, he tells him, I'm sorry, yeah. but, you know, you know, I have to like law is law and I have to do it. And that expression on Bruce Willis's face right at the very end, uh, when he's taken in the you know he's like i've been caught you know what i mean it, he didn't yeah. say he doesn't say anything but no. just that expression on his face is like to get you know the jig is up now yeah let's talk about that phenomenal ending at the bank okay uh that amazing action sequence as you read the script and you read how it was gonna play out and then on the set shooting it uh did shooting it blow out any expectations that you got from reading the script and on how elaborate that bank the shootout the escape and all that went down awesome i mean honestly wes really surprised me on set like i've seen something way bigger than I'd expected, to be honest. Like I, I've seen something very big. Uh, when you read scripts, especially with like the action scenes, you don't know what exactly it's going to be happening in, in reality, like yeah. on set, right? So you see maybe description and stuff, but like when when we get there, we we we're kind of like ready to see what's going to happen, right? And you kind of like you trust your your your, your director, and you just go with it. So, and then you get surprised. So you're here, you look at it there, you're shooting over there, and then you come, there's another angle shooting over there, and then you're you backing up, you're you you grab your phone, you get shot or something, and you start taping here and there. So there are a lot of things, and sometimes things that, you know, you know, come, you know, you know, yeah. like all of a sudden he sees there's something really important that has to be there or has to be done there. So I think was it was really creative. And um I think the 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 action scenes uh, came out great, man. Uh, it was. It was phenomenal. That was just kick ass. Now you play a big role in uh, in uh, Bruce Willis's character in the very end. By you were wounded, but you still had the wherewithal to do something to get the proof that you needed. Like I said, I don't. We don't want to give away too many spoilers. Now uh, Reynolds. Uh, he knew something was going to happen and he had the wherewithal to pull out his phone. Uh, how did you come to terms when you were acting that out? Like he knew that something bad was going to happen for him to pull out his phone and start and hit that record button. I think if anybody gets shot on a field like that, he will just focus on his injury or his, yeah. you know, like... But this is the beauty of Reynolds character that he doesn't care. He wants to prove, you know, his point. He wants to bring down the bad guys. He, he, he always had doubts, but he didn't have the chance or didn't know how to prove it. Mm -hmm. So even though he, he was like dying from pain, but he, this is his chance to have at least a proof because that was the only you know, reason he, you know, he brought down the big dog, right? Yep. Like, and he just, even though he was in pain and everything after he got shot, but he still got to do what he, he has to do. Yeah. And, you know, and, and he, 
he did. He put her in tape and he, um, you know, that was his proof to to bring him down. Now, this film. I think it's a great moment. It's a great moment. It's it's like, shit, it, it's, it really is. Like, that's what I've been, you know, saying to everybody. Nobody's listened to me. And also, deep inside, he doesn't want to, now he's seeing it. Yeah. You know, the, the betrayal and the, you know, everything is seeing it in front of his eyes. So it's like it, so much emotions and uh, any you know, doubts that Reynolds may have had were wiped away in that moment, you know, of his boss being crooked, you know, any doubts yeah. he had were completely gone. Now, this film is like three stories. You got the police story, you got the shadow military, and then you have the streets with Pettis. Uh, Pettis is a very fascinating character and his arc from when we first meet him throughout the film to the ending, he goes through quite an arc. What'd you think of the character of, of Pettis? Uh, I think it was very well written and the three different elements, the police, the shadow military, and then the criminals, uh, the street element with Pettis were blended together beautifully, but uh, share your thoughts about Pettis and his character, and of course how vital he was to the story. I think Cleon nailed it, man. Like the the role, he really killed it, um, and that's why I'm telling you, it's one of it's different. This film is different from any other straight up action film because it's it's very rich and it has a lot of stories in there as you said and each one of those characters i, I think every, each one of us was what we're really really sort of like focusing and uh, in his character he want to do like the best possible and um i think uh pettis or uh, leon um i think he did a great job in mm -hmm. terms of showing that not the typical sort of like bad guy you know like that's what i said like you need each bad guy definitely has his bright side right like if even though he was like a gangster or like a you know the head of like you know the gangs or whatever but at the same time he's 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 given money for poor people and he's like he's taking care of his own people and you know what i mean yeah like and then we also that's another message you know beside Reynolds' message that he wants to pursue anybody that believes in something he has to go all the way in and you know pursue it and go by his gut feeling and prove it you know yeah he also that character he has his own uh sort of point that he wants to you know that we want to say that it doesn't matter like life can change people you know where you come from changes you know the family the, the financial status you know mm -hmm. neighborhood all that can add up and change somebody who's really nice can make you know be bad guy for some reason circumstances you know um and i think you can see that that you know each one of us has different sort of um you know sort of like a side so i think even though he was the bad guy and like he did a lot of you know uh horrible things but still he has his his own sort of like good guy inside that yeah. sometimes and, it can come out and the writers did a great job by giving us like the little clues when he talks about his mother leaving him on a street corner or something like that yeah. he he even when he was bad he still had a uh, a part of him that was redemptive. He could be redeemed uh, and have the good part of him come out. And he goes through this amazing arc. Now, as an actor, you know, every actor, as with any profession, whatever project, job that you do, you walk away from it better than you did coming in. You learn something new. What did you gain out of a day to die that you're going to take with you for the rest of your career? I think uh, multiple things, to be honest with you. Number one, I think um, it's a statement, to be honest. Like uh, the fact that, you know, back to back, uh, I've been doing movies here in the U.S. Uh, and in Hollywood. The fact that I, I was able to pull it off not doing stereotype roles for yeah. the second time in a row. I think that's my big win. That proves that if you write for the role, if you good actor, you good actor, mm -hmm. and that I hope that will be uh, sort of a door for to open for other people. There are a lot of great talents in there, you know, in Hollywood and the whole nation that they don't just have the chance to to get the opportunity. And I think mm -hmm. 
that proves a lot that I don't have to play a Middle Eastern role. I don't have to play like a guy like in the desert or I don't, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like a Hispanic guy who doesn't have to be like a drug dealer yeah. or like a Russian guy who doesn't be a mafia or European or whatever, Asian. Like all these stereotype roles, I think it's time to, to make a change. And I think Hollywood started to realize that and started to uh, not as fast as we, we expect and we mm-hmm. want, but at least it's, it's a good start. I, 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 I think um, I also learned that, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason or a right time. Uh, I think uh, I was blessed to work with a producer uh, as Andrew. You know, Andrew, uh, uh, you know, we need people like that in order to give chances for, for actors and filmmakers in general. That if you, you know, you need to believe in some people to give them opportunities. Um, also, Wes, I, I think I'm blessed to work with with such a great director that he he wanted to 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 make this film as much uh, diverse as possible. Look at the diversity that we yeah. have in the film. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I gained a lot of friends uh, and made a, a really great friendship from from this film. Uh, 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 Kevin Dillon, Frank Grillo, Vern Davis, uh, uh, Leon, mm-hmm. uh, Brooke. Uh, uh alex all, all like all these guys were, were were amazing i think uh the most important thing for me is to make sure that my word gets out there and i want people to realize that oh so that could be a good guy that could play this role and he doesn't have to be stereotype this ethnicity or yeah 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 now when your agent uh, presented you with this role to audition for, did they t- say what kind of look they were going for for Reynolds? Uh, or did you like really impress them with your audition? Do you do you have any knowledge of that? What it, look it was, they I were think looking it, I, f- yeah, for I think Reynolds. it was all ethnicities. Okay. okay. And th- usually when you get that, this is like the, <laughs> you know, the most hard Thing you can ever audition for because everybody's in audition for the same role yeah you know what i mean so yeah. um i think i was blessed to, uh, to get the chance to you know audition and first of all to meet personally with the producer who he uh, he 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 called uh, uh the director and uh you know set it up and i had the pleasure meeting with him and uh they wanted to see my work my previous work on, you know, obviously, uh, my previous film helped a little, you know, a score to settle, mm-hmm. uh, opposite Nicholas Cage and Benjamin yep. Bratt. So I think that also uh, helped, uh, by, by far this film for me, it's a, it's a turning point and, it, you know, uh, it changed a lot, you know, sort of like, um, gave me a lot of confidence. It gave me a lot of hope that you can always do what you always, uh, work for. Obviously, I'm, you know, um, I want to do more and more and more. And, and I don't, I don't want to be, you know, sort of like um, typecast in like action, only action yeah. films, just like I did, you know, um, in, in, you know, uh, in other territories in the world, like movies like drama, I play the villain, I play the mm-hmm. nice guy, the rom-com. Um, so I think. Um, well, that's the thing about Hollywood and actors of all ethnicities when it comes to genres. There are actors that, because they've done one, two, or three successful action movies, dramas, or or horrors, they do sort of get boxed in uh, by casting directors, producers, and directors for that genre in specific. Um, and it's very hard to break free of that and show your talent that you can do action, you can do drama, you can do comedy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. would you feel comfortable and have you done comedy in the past? Absolutely, you know, um, and that's what, I, what, I, what I'm really hoping for is to play different roles here, just the same way I did, you know, in Egypt. You know, I want to uh, do everything that I always wanted to. And honestly, I, you know, um, I want to do something that relatable to me, like, uh, I want to do like some sort of like, you know, a culture difference sort of movies to show, you know, like when you have culture differences, uh, you have a lot of dramas and you have a lot of comedy in there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Uh, like fish out of water. You know what I mean? Like all these kind of stuff. Uh, it's so related to me and it feels so real. That's And every time you, you get close to the, you know, being real, 
uh, people really feel that, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it reflects on the screen. It does. Um, so I'm, I'm, I, that's what I'm looking forward to do different genres and different roles. That's awesome. Muhammad, you are great in A Day to Die. Guys, please watch it. Like I said, it's available on your video on demand platform of choice, Amazon, Voodoo, and, and so on. It's a great action movie. Uh, it's not a just straight up blow him up, shoot him up movie. This movie has a story. It has a plot line. It has a theme. It has great characters, great acting. Uh, your character was great. You did great in the film. Uh, Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The chemistry with you and Bruce and then Kevin and Frank, everybody was great. You guys pulled off something really special. And before we go, do you have any final thoughts you want to share? Thank you so much. I just, uh, um, you know, um, I, I, I thank you for this great interview and uh, I thank the audience and I really love to for them to watch the film. Yes. And uh, hopefully I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, prepare for my new feature film. And uh, I hope uh, they're going to like it. It has nothing to do with action this time. It's Can a you horror give us film. a hint? What, kind, what yeah. is it? It's a horror film. Oh. It's untitled still, yeah, but it's a horror. And it's going to take place uh, here and in Egypt. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Have so you I'm started really shooting yet or not yet? No, no, no. Okay. It's in the works right now. It's at, we're, we're in a, a, a writing script stage right now, so it's in development. So we're almost done with the script. So hopefully... Uh, it, you know, it, it gets done. Uh, we get into production uh, probably this year. That's hopefully. awesome. That's awesome. Muhammad, thank you so much. I want to thank our viewers who are watching this live and those of you who will be watching this later on archived. Uh, again, the movie's called The Day to Die. Bruce Willis, uh, Kevin Dillon, Frank Grillo, Mo Muhammad Kareem. Check it out. Muhammad, thank you. On behalf of Muhammad and myself, guys, stay safe and stay walking. Good night, everybody. Good night.